to figure out what it is you actually want in your next chapter, you have to start with how you want to feel. For many of us, we know we want a fabulous next chapter, but we struggle to figure out what it looks like beyond just a huge vision board, you know, with all sorts of wants and photos and pictures. What will help you to get clarity is to ask yourself, how do you want to feel? Hello, everyone. I'm Sherry Harmel, and I'm your host for the Extraordinary Women podcast, which is all about creating your own fabulous next chapter. Well, let's get back to the topic. Focusing on the feelings that you want to have can really help you to find the direction in whatever it is you're working through. Whether you're designing your next chapter, which is our conversations, choosing a travel de destination or maybe travel experience, deciding on where you live, your home, um, you know, it might even be, do I want to go on a second date with that person? Well, connecting to the feelings we want to feel provides a much clearer path to almost any decision that you need to make and actually can be much more helpful, and I can't believe I'm saying this, than the best pro-con list. Now, if you're still not believing me, I'm going to give you a very simple example, you know, and I'm going to use, you know, all these upcoming holidays that are happening in the stretch between Thanksgiving in America and New Year's, one holiday after another. And it's a time of the year when we can feel very overwhelmed more than a little nuts and even look forward to it all being finished. But I'm going to show you how if we focus on the feelings we want to feel for this holiday season, everything becomes simpler. Now, the feelings that I identified that I wanted to feel during this holiday season is calm. And for me, that means not having a crazy schedule, safe and secure, you know, I want to make sure that I don't overspend, that I stay within my budget. Because, you know, if you're like me, sometimes we get caught up in trying to make our loved ones happy. And in that process, we throw out our budgets. <laughs> and last, I want to feel appreciated. Now, I hope that that happens. I hope all my loved ones, you know, love what I buy them. But I also want to feel appreciated beyond the gifts that I give. So I've identified three feelings I want to feel this holiday season. But now what? What do I do with that information? Well, next, I'm going to work on the actions that I can take that are aligned with the feelings I want. And we're going to talk about this as it relates to designing your next chapter. What actions can you take that are aligned with the feelings that you want? For example, calm. I, I identified that as my first feeling that I want. I have two kids. I have six grandkids. No, I don't. Or I have seven grandkids. Good Lord, I don't even know. And I have three step grandkids. It can easily be crazy land. Trust me. Actually, crazy land would be a hysterical game to create for adults instead of the candy land for kids. But that's a whole nother topic. So I have all these, you know, grandkids and they, you know, are run the gamut of ages. Yeah, I could try to run between the households, but my kids don't live close to each other. And it's Minnesota. That's where both of them live. So, you know, no one knows what the driving weather is going to be like or if there's going to be a snowstorm. So as I identify actions that really would support my desire to feel calm and knowing the scenario, I'm choosing one day with one family and another day with another family. No driving from home to home in the same day. No eating, trying to eat, I should say, two meals, one after another, and no dragging gifts from one home to the other. In addition, as I said, my daughter has four children under five. 
So at her house, I'll be needed to cook, I'll be cleaning up, I'll be helping out. And that means I have to dress in washables, <laughs> as I call it. In contrast, at my son's home, all the kids are in junior high, high school or college. And I can dress up, I he'll hand me a glass of wine, I can relax and chat with everyone, entirely different wardrobe. And, and it's so fun to kind of have the two different worlds, so to speak. Now, the second feeling I mentioned that I wanted to feel was secure and safe. And I mentioned my budget as well as my innate desire, we all have it, to be loved. And that can run into overspending. So the action I've set for myself is to limit each grandchild's gifts to just two. And that means I really have to focus on the right gifts. The next feeling that I wanted to feel was appreciation. Now we all know absolutely that we can't control the way other people act or feel. And yet, if you're like me, we probably spend some time wishing we could. So I'm going to really work on forcing myself to control, to really focus on the actions that I, you know, that are in my control. I could ask each grandchild, you know, do you like it? Will you wear it? Will you use it? But I'm re reminding myself that we often receive what it is that we give. Therefore, I've decided that I'm going to do a thankful toast in each home on each holiday and, you know, tweak it a little bit based on the holiday, but something like thanking them for welcoming me into their home, share that they all mean so much to me and say that even if I, you know, the gifts I gave weren't perfect, know that I bought and wrapped each gift for each one of you out of love. So I hope that you can all now see that once I identified the feelings I want this to feel this holiday season, my actions, which include the decisions, suddenly become clearer and simpler. But how could this work when you're trying to design your own fabulous next chapter? Well, start with the feelings you want to feel. Do you want to feel more confident? Do you want to feel sexy again? Do you want to feel smart, in control? Do you want to feel safe? Do you want to be jazzed or energetic about this next phase of your life, this next chapter? List out all the feelings that you want to feel in this next chapter. Now, just like I did back when I was talking about the holidays, once you've got those feelings written out, come up with the actions that you could take so that you feel those feelings. Let's say one of the feelings that you absolutely want to feel in your next chapter is to feel sexy again. I know that was something that came up for me after my 25 year marriage ended and that's how I landed in Paris. I couldn't imagine ever feeling sexy again. And yet I, I just wanted so desperately to feel like a pretty woman again. <clears throat> If that's a feeling that you can connect with, ask yourself, what actions could you take that would help you to step into feeling sexy again? Now, all kinds of ideas will come to you and write them all down because in all of those crazy ideas are some real gems. You might come up with wear beautiful nightgowns to bed. And that means it doesn't matter whether you're sleeping with someone or not it's important because it's impacts how we feel and that might mean you got to go out and buy some beautiful nightgowns just for you maybe it's spend more time on your daily outfits so that you feel more confident attractive and sexy what we wear really does impact how we feel about ourselves now maybe you're going to choose outfits that show off the bits of yourself that you like and you feel are really the best parts of your physical attributes. You know, if you're, it's your decollage, wear V-neck sweaters. If you have gorgeous wrists and hands, maybe wear three-quarter sleeves or beautiful bracelets. Do you feel 
more feminine in skirts and boots than you do in, you know, pants and tennis shoes, as an example. Bringing attention to what are your best physical attributes has truly a way of almost camouflaging the parts of you that you don't want to draw attention to. You know, and about clothing, I mentioned this very briefly. I loved my jock clothes back when I played lots and lots of tennis. But sexy is not a word I would ever have used to describe how I felt when I was in full tennis gear. Kind of an oxymoron, right? So analyze how you feel in your various go-to outfits. Another action, if your feeling is or your desire is to feel more sexy in this next chapter, it might be to put on some lipstick. I feel totally different when I put on lipstick. As we age, our lips, I swear to God, get paler and paler and smaller and smaller, and lipstick can help all of that. Add some mascara. Spend time on your hair. Keep checking in, though, with how you are feeling and whether or not the actions you are taking are helping you to feel the feeling that you want. Now, another feeling I often hear women of a certain age share is that they want to, you know, feel that they have a purpose, that they are contributing to something. And that can mean a variety of things for, you know, different women. One person might say it's starting a side gig. She wants something that can travel with her that it doesn't take up five days a week, but it's something. She's growing something. For another person, it might be volunteering or mentoring, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that, I don't know, makes you feel warm and like, gosh, this is something I'm contributing that's beyond myself. It might be that you babysit your grandchildren from time to time to give your son or daughter a relaxing date night with their partner. Whatever it is, I want you to start with the feelings that you want and don't let yourself filter. Don't say, oh gosh, I can't feel that way. That's why I use sexy as an example. It's very easy to say, oh gosh, I'm a woman of X years. I've, I've done it all. I've had it all. You know, I, why should I feel sexy anymore? That's one that sometimes we have a tendency to filter out. So after you've identified the feelings that you want to feel, come up with sev- several actions and let yourself brainstorm that you could take to support you feeling what it is you want to feel. And the next step is that you analyze every action that you took. This is called prototyping in the engineering world. You try something out and then you reflect as to whether or not the action gave you what it was you were seeking, gave you the feeling that you were wanting to feel. You know, as an example, after a couple of weeks of wearing beautiful uh, nightgowns to bed at night, ask yourself, did wearing that pretty nightgown to bed each night make you feel more sexy and attractive? Ask yourself if you spent more care with, you know, whatever outfits you put together that highlight, as I call it, your good bits. Did that impact how you felt? Did you feel more sexy? Because that is the emotion you were going after. How did you feel when you wore makeup out and about versus not? You know, you're you're doing some check-ins to start to see which actions are bringing you closer and closer to the feelings that you want. This is a very important step when you're designing your next chapter, because sometimes the actions that we think we must take in order to feel a certain way actually aren't that valuable. And we need to pivot into a different direction. You know, the vegetable garden that you planted because you wanted to feel like you were growing everything that you were eating might suddenly take over your life because it takes so much time and you start to resent the garden. That's a checkpoint, right? Same for side gigs. Side gigs sometimes have an incredible ability to, you know, bleed into every single day rather than the two days or three days that you wanted to work on it. One day a week to babysit your grandbabies, 
might feel good, but more than one day doesn't maybe add to you feeling like you really are contributing or have a purpose. So this final step of analyzing <clears throat> how, whether or not the actions you took actually lead to the feelings that you want to feel is super important because it allows you to filter. And if you don't do that, you have absolutely no idea which actions to get rid of because we can't just keep adding, adding actions to certain feelings. Otherwise, it's we get nowhere, right? Just like every, anything, too many is just too many. So to summarize, connect and identify the feelings that you want to feel when you begin to design your next chapter. Those feelings are the foundation to the life that you want to create for yourself. Next, after you've got the feelings, come up with the actions that you could take that align you with the feelings that you want to feel. And last prototype, after you take certain actions, you know, that you think are going to help you to, to feel the feelings that you want, analyze each of them, ask the good question, does it add to the feelings that I want to feel? I hope that has helped because part of the process of designing and creating a fabulous next chapter is knowing how to do it. What is it in a structured way? What is it that I want in this next chapter of my life? I want to thank you all. And if you found this, you know, beneficial, interesting, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do subscribe if you haven't. And I just absolutely can't wait to hear what you want in your fabulous next chapter. Abiento.